Big, big show for you tonight. Oh, I'm so excited. Emerald Lagasse, everybody, welcome to Emerald Live. You know, it seems, uh, well, thank you. You know, uh, fresh mushrooms seem to be popping up everywhere these days, eh? Oh, yes, and not just the white button kind, although they're pretty good. These days, you might see a portobello mushroom steak burger on your neighbor's grill. Or you may see a mushroom risotto in, like, a casual restaurant. They're popping up everywhere. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to make the most of my mushrooms. Speaking about wild, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> What's happening? All right. What's happening, fellas? What's happening? <laughs> we're going to mushroom land. Mushroom. Right. Yes, we love them. You're not even going to believe where we're going. All right. Mushroom land. Yes. Mushroom land. Yes. <laughs> Making room for mushrooms right here on Emerald Live. Mushrooms. So, you want to know what we're going to make with mushrooms tonight? Yeah. Me too. Hello, Jay. How you doing today? You're looking mighty fine. Oh. Okay, we're going to start with a little fried chantreau mushroom salad with a creamy Parmesan cheese dressing. Oh, yeah, babe. And then a chicken of the woods mushroom. Have you ever heard of that? Well... That's why you're watching them alive. <laughs> We're going to do that with a little sherry sauce and served in some pa pastry as sort of a little appetizer. Yummy. And then a little black trumpet, uh, sweet corn, and truffle risotto. Yes! <laughs> now, we're going to take dried porcini mushrooms, also called seps. We're going to take them dried, and we're going to use them, show you how to use them as a crust from salmon with a little tomato sauce. And then a little roasted abalone mushroom with crab meat as a salad. Nice. Abalone, you might say. <laughs> yes, and I'll show you all about them later on. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Terrific. You know what? It's just too pretty not to, like, focus in on this thing today. So uh, I, 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 I rarely do this, but Houston, uh, come on for a ride over here with me, will you? <laughs> They're up in the control tower right now going, what the heck is he doing? No, they're just too beautiful. And I want to thank the uh, awesome uh, Pennsylvania Mushroom Board for their help and their support. Yeah. Check it out. Are you doing this? These are oyster mushrooms right here, okay, which are cultivated. Look how beautiful those are. And these are a little spread of them right there. See how they sort of grow like that in a, in a cluster? Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. That's like one mushroom thing right there. Isn't that unbelievable? Oh, yeah. And then um, you got these here. These are called pom-pom mushrooms, kind of like little furry little things. Pom I don't make this stuff up now. This is, this is the truth. This is pom-poms. Doc, this is called uh, a beach mushroom. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Honshiami is another name for them, but we won't go there. Right. Yep. Uh, mataki, very popular in Japanese cooking. Uh, and very, very expensive. Dynamite, dynamite mushroom right here. This is uh, courtesy of Chef Chris Wilson at Emerald's Restaurant. Whoa. We, yeah, we flew these in last night for the show uh, today. Uh, this is an abalone mushroom. And it's so... You got, I'm going to let you smell this thing later on. Don't be knocking them with the sticks or okay, anything. No but problem, no problem. We're going to roast them later on, and we're going to make them with a crab meat and, uh, and as a salad. And they, they're so meaty, they almost taste like those... Uh, uh, those um, portobello mushrooms. Oh, this man. is portobello. These are little uh, sort of um, cremini mushrooms. Those are the chanterelles that we're going to make. Look at these oyster mushrooms. Wow. How beautiful those are, right? Black trumpet mushrooms right here. 
We're going to do something with them. And then later on, I'll show you that side over there. Are you ready to get, like, mushroom madness going on? Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. All right. So for me, what I do is I want to take... You know, everybody thinks that mushrooms are wild, but that's not necessarily all mushrooms are wild. Most mushrooms today are cultivated, which means that they grow them. It's like a business. These chanterelles are actually wild. And in Louisiana, across the lake, Lake Pontchartrain, in uh, certain times of the year, when it rains, especially in the spring, these little chanterelle mushrooms just sort of pop up everywhere. And then we have a mushroom person go and get them and, <laughs> and bring them to the restaurant. And then we cook them, and we're happy. <laughs> happy. <laughs> so. What we're going to do is we're going to take the chanterelles and make them even more happier. And why we're going to do that is this. We're going to take them. We're going to hit, hit them with a little salt like this. Mm -hmm -hmm. And then some hot sauce. Okay? Some hot sauce. Oh, happy, happy, happy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take some buttermilk. And you like to let them sit like that for maybe about 15 minutes or so. We're going to toss them around. Now, we're going to take them out of the liquid, and we're going to put them inside a combination of a third flour and two-thirds cornmeal. We're going to season that up with some essence. So once they get happy, we take them out of there. We put them inside the cornmeal flour mixture, and then in vegetable oil, 360 degrees, we're going to fry them until they're golden brown. OK? Now. For that, you got to have a dressing. So, what I do is take a little homemade mayonnaise, put this in a bowl. Yeah, you could use the, uh, the jar stuff if you want. Parmesan cheese, the juice of a half a lemon, some sour cream. Got to have a little garlic in there too, right? Worcestershire sauce. Now, this is pretty thick. So what we do now is we take good olive oil, and we're going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil in here slowly so that it doesn't break, okay? And then we're going to let that get nice and happy, season it with a little salt and pepper. So I'm going to stop breading the chanterelle mushrooms, getting them in the fryer. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> mushroom madness tonight and uh, I'm gonna show you now how we're gonna put that dish together so we let it marinate for at least 15 minutes half an hour is good and then uh, we put them in the cornmeal flour mixture I got vegetable oil on about 360 degrees and what a nice smile you have <laughs> and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop them in here shake out that excess and then we're gonna start frying the mushrooms Pretty simple. So, now we have this Parmesan cheese dressing. And um, what we're going to do is use a, what's called a spring mix. Basically an assortment of beautiful, beautiful greens. I have a lot of marsh in here. I have a little bit of red leaf, green leaf, a little frisee, a little... Uh, Beet green, oh, delicious. So now what we're going to do is this. We're going to season our lettuces, salt and pepper. Oh, yes. Let's check on our mushrooms here. Oh, they're looking beautiful. Then what we're going to do, 
is we're going to just take our dressing. Make sure the greens, you know, you use a salad spinner is a good investment. Most people, they don't dry the greens enough and then they add the dressing, it completely breaks down and they wonder why they got a lousy salad, you know? So, now what we're going to do is we're going to toss... Oh, yes! Happy mushrooms! Now we're going to lightly toss the greens with our dressing. Real nice and light. Real simple. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our chanterelles that are fried. Drain them real good. <laughs> Want to drain them real good. And then now, as I've said before, is when you want to season them. As soon as they come out of the hot oil, we add a little essence like this. Okay? Right on the old greens. And there you have it, a little fried chanterelle salad, okay? I'm going to make a little, uh, a little dish right now using uh, chicken. And uh, take a little oil in there, and I'm going to add some onion to it. You want to cook the onion for about three minutes, get the flavor out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add garlic, and we're going to add a little butter. But now what we're going to do is add an assortment of sliced mushrooms. I got some shiitakes. I got those yellow. I got pom-poms. We're going to add them in here. A little assortment of sliced mushrooms. Now, the one thing... We're going to deglaze it a little bit with some sherry wine. Oh, yeah. Take it off the heat. Now, the one thing with mushrooms, they absorb a lot of liquid. So you don't have to call 911 if you start absorbing. Now, what we want to do is we're going to cook these, season them with salt and pepper. We're going to cool them down. I have some here that are already cool. All right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a sheet of puff pastry, cut a little circle. Cool mushrooms on the bottom. Chicken breast. You know, we're always looking for ideas. I'm going to put the chicken breast, fold it over, and I'm going to sort of make like a half moon shape like this. Okay? Now, for that, while it's baking, I'm going to egg wash it and bake it in the oven. 375 degrees. It's going to take about 25, 30 minutes. But I want to have a sauce with this. So, what I'm going to do is in this saucepan, I'm going to take butter, and I'm going to take flour... And I'm going to make a roux with some shallots. Then I'm going to use some more sherry in there. And then I'm going to add some chicken stock to it to start making a sauce. Everybody with me so far? And then what I think we'll do is we'll use another type of those mushrooms on this side, since we haven't been over here yet. Make a sauce. Get the chicken and the mushrooms and the puff pastry in the oven. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Doc Gibbs! <laughs> time so far? Yeah. All right, let's recap where we're going down the road here so that nobody falls off the road. First, that sauce. I want to recap that. Butter and flour of equal parts. We made a roux, and then we added shallots. We cooked the roux for about four or five minutes, and then I added chicken stock, and then I added a good handful of, of chicken in the hen mushrooms. That would be these guys right here, Okay. Beautiful. You see how they come in a cluster like that? And we just kind of break them off. Okay? We cook them inside the sauce like that. Oh, yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. All right. So now, to finish the sauce, I'll come back to that in a second. Then what we did is we took puff pastry and made a circle. Good salad, huh? Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. We made a, a circle. We put the chicken breast in the circle. We put the cool mushrooms on top. 
We wrapped it, and that's what we had right here. You want to make a little slit or a little vent? Why? Because the mushrooms have still got moisture. So they're going to, like, release that moisture. And if you don't, it's going to get soggy on you. You got to get that release valve. We all need a release valve. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you want to egg wash it. That way it gets a great color. You with me so far? Yeah. Great. All right, now, to finish the sauce, option, totally up to you. A little bit of cream to cream it, a little bit of butter to finish it, okay? So now we've got the sauce in here. Turn up the heat one more time. Make sure it's cooked. Now, 25 minutes, 25 minutes later to 30 minutes, we're going to go and take the chicken. The great thing about this, folks, you can do this a day, two days before, okay? Then when you're ready, what I like to do, time to get the old family, the dinner bell going here. What we're going to do now is we come here, we take this delicious chicken of the woods sauce, okay, a little pool, if you will. Oh, would I love to jump in that. Oh, a little pool. Yes. And then what you do is you just sort of take your chicken. Woo, they're hot. Doesn't that look good? Yes. And we just kind of, kind of just lightly shingle them like that. And then we just take a little essence. And then what we do is we'll take a little bit of green onions. And there you have it, folks. A little mushroom. Now, before we serve them up, let me tell you about this next dish that we're going to do. Risotto, or Boreal rice from Italy. Fantastic. One of my weaknesses. What we're going to do is I got vegetable stock. You know, you can buy vegetable stock or vegetable broth now. I got sweet corn, two ears, <whistles> corn right off the cob, a little onion, <whistles> butter, we're going to start a little garlic. This is the arborio rice. This here is black trumpet mushrooms, okay? The whole thing about risotto, it's all in the stirring. Once you get it going, you got to keep stirring it. Can't be answering the phone. <laughs> Who cares if the mailman's at the front door? The heck with him. He'll come back. Risotto. So now here's what we start. A little butter and good olive oil. Okay? We're going to start with the onion. We're going to saute this for about four or five minutes. Then I'm going to add the corn, the mushrooms, the garlic. Okay? Then the rice. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. Back in. mushrooms tonight and I waited I waited for you you see I didn't go do that to you no we're here now let's go back to risotto I waited for you now I started with the onions butter olive oil then I added the sweet corn another three four minutes salt pepper then I added the arborio rice and that's where I am right now Yes, and the chicken wrapped in the puff pastry and the puff pastry wrapped chicken with the mushrooms 
and the chicken in the woods, hen sauce, yes. All right. Now we're going to take the black trumpet mushrooms. We're going to start working them in. A little bit of white wine. I have to drink some. <laughs> now, now we're going to start the liquid. So, the vegetable broth, which we made, but you can buy. We used a lot of winter squash, onions, carrots, celery. Now we're adding the vegetable stock in here. So this is actually complete vegetarian if we wanted it to, okay? Not that this is a vegetarian show, but this could be a vegetarian dish. See, I always get, well, forget it, I'm not going there. They always criticize me, Doc. <laughs> I know. Yeah, he never does any vegetarian food. You gotta keep watching. <laughs> all right, so now, it's all about the stirring, folks, okay? Seriously, you got to keep stirring it. Takes about 21-ish minutes stirring. By the time the rice, it goes and the starch runs wild in there. Oh, so you got to stir it. And I don't know where everybody thinks that you got to like jack the heat up full blast all the time. You know, if that was meant to be, you would have just an on and off button. You wouldn't have these things called knobs. I'm going to use my knob right now. And I'm going to turn it down to like medium. Because now we need to keep stirring it. And then we're going to add, keep adding uh, stock in here. Okay? So we're going to take a chance. All right. Now, while that's happening... Let's move on to this other dish that I want to do for you. Using dried porcini mushrooms. You can buy these dried mushrooms in grocery stores. And if you put water on them or hot water on them, they reconstitute back. And they're yummy. However, this particular dish, I was mentioning Chef Chris at Emeralds, is a fantastic dish. You start it in the pan and do it in the oven. And I'm going to use it with salmon. Okay. Yeah, salmon, that number one requested WW Food Network, go on the emerald thing, salmon. But with my salmon, I need to have a sauce. So I want to start with a little olive oil in the sauce pot. And I'm going to add onion to it. I like onion, what can I say? You know? Some people like... I like onion. Now, we added the butter in there. Once this cooks, we got to season it. Then we'll come back and re-season it. See, that's what happens. You know, a lot of people, they don't season their food. They wonder why the kids don't come home. <laughs> season your food. <laughs> They'll be running home. See, you got to season, and then you come back and re-season. You wait till the end of the season, it's too late. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. All right. All right, so salt and pepper. Ooh, uh, yo, yeah. Got to stir it. You don't want it to stick. See, the rice is cooking. Evaporation, concentration and flavor, evaporation. That's why now we're going to add a little bit more vegetable stock. Okay? Now, stir that up here. Now, let's go back to the onion. The onion, the garlic is going to go in next. A little bit of thyme. And about uh, four nice tomatoes. Make sure they're ripe, will you? Oh. Now, that starts happening. And then what we're going to do now, we cook this about two minutes. And then what we're going to do is add a little tomato paste. Another thing that most people don't know why they use it. Well, they told me to use it, but why? I don't know. Tomato paste is like the foundation. It's like the brick and mortar. It keeps everything together, okay? So, a little tomato paste. And then what we're gonna do 
is add a little chicken broth and a little bit of cream. So we're going to bring this up to temperature, and then we're going to lower the heat. Now, we're going to come over here. But first, we're over here. It's all about the stirring. Risotto. I have a watch somewhere in the audience set. We're going to add a little bit more stock. Now, stir it up a little bit. And see, that it's starting to get starchy in there. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the porcini mushrooms dry inside of the old coffee grinder. Yes. See, it's like magic in there, huh? Okay, so we got that going over here. Make sure it's nothing sticking on the bottom. Then, we're going to take that. Oh, yeah, like kryptonite. We're going to take the porcini mushrooms. We're going to add a little butter. Shallots and garlic. Breadcrumbs. Parmesan cheese. A little essence. Now... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to place the salmon in a skillet. We're going to take the crust and top the salmon with the porcini mushroom crust. We're going to blast it in the oven while I'm stirring my risotto. Stick around. We'll be right back. in the Emerald Live Band, folks. Welcome back. Emerald Lagasse here. Mushroom Madness. Oh, look, I waited for you again. Yes, I did. Now, the reason is, is because I want to show you how the evolution of the risotto is happening. See, it's starting to bust. That starch is coming out. But look, there's not enough liquid in here right now. So, that's why you should have the stock Nearby, you could always use a little water, okay? No, it's not, unless you season it. So now, look, we're getting to the crucial stage, and I'm going to show you an Emerald Lagasse trick here shortly about how to finish the risotto. Now, I waited for you because I got the salmon here. Olive oil. Salt. <laughs> and then pepper. And we're going to put this right inside the pan, skin side down. Then, fresh ground pepper. Mom, give him his Oreos back, will you? There you go. All right. So now what you want to do is you want to take you want to take the porcini mushroom crust right over it right over it over it over it over it over it over it and then in the oven it goes 400 425 degrees the sauce for that salmon dish, that tomato sauce with a little bit of thyme. Look, it's just reducing out, getting happy. That's why they call it cooking. <laughs> I am happy. Oh! Oh! Now, see the starch is coming out. Oh! Now, oh. it's all in the stirring. But look, we're at a crucial point right now. Now is when you got to go in for a couple of reasons. One, how is the seasoning and do I have to re-season it? 
two. Where, how al dente is the arborio rice and how al dente do you want it? So, we go in here. You need seasoning. All right. <laughs> so, that's what your brain does. So we add a little salt. <laughs> we add some fresh pepper. It's getting very starchy. You see that? But it's not cooked enough yet. It's a couple of minutes away. So now what we're going to do is this. We're going to add... Oh, we'll just add it. <laughs> so now, the risotto is still simmering. Sweet corn and black truffle. Well, we haven't put the truffle in yet. What is a truffle? This is a truffle. It's also a fungi. But unfortunately, you can't really grow these. In France, in Italy, they use pigs because of their scent. And they go with truffle ears. And on a, they're on a leash. And they go dancing through the woods. And then the pig stops. Goes crazy because he smells the truff eye. And they dig it. And then the guy has to grab the truffle from the pig before he eats it. And all of that for $199 a pound. <laughs> so, while we're almost done with the risotto, because I want to show you this trick, what we're going to do is this. We're going to take the abalone mushroom mm. with some shaved fennel, a little bit of garlic, yeah. little rosemary, olive oil, Salt, <laughs> pepper, and then we're going to wrap it up in a little package, okay? And we're going to roast this. So we've got salmon in the oven. We've got abalone mushrooms in the oven. we got risotto almost done. We're going to have a big fest when we come back. Stick around. <laughs> tonight. Oh, I'm in a jam. I have no food ready. That's because we really cook on this show. So, you see how the starch now? Let me show you now the Emerald Lagasse trick. Right when it's perfect, the way I like to finish the risotto, I like to take a little cream. I like to work that in here. And then I take Parmesan cheese. Oh, man. Shh, they'll all be doing it. <laughs> Fold it in. See how nice and creamy that looks? Okay. Now, here's how I like to finish it. We're going to turn the heat off. Right at the end, I add a little truffle oil and a little porcini mushroom oil. Oh, yeah, babe. Got a big budget on this show. <laughs> now, when you're ready, it's time to dish it up. So we got the black truffle, black trumpet, sweet corn risotto. Now, how I like to finish mine. Little palm. And then we'll do a little shaving of the black truffle. 
And then, a little truffle oil. There you have it. Beautiful risotto, right? Now, the tomato sauce for the salmon with the porcini, dry porcini mushroom crust, which is in the oven. Now I want to finish this. So what I like to do right at the end, a little butter. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yes, indeed. Now we're going to work that butter in. When you add butter to a sauce, you got to be sure not to boil it, though. Okay? You just want to incorporate the butter. You see how it's getting shiny like that? A little sheen. Oh, yes. So now what we're going to do is we got to taste this to see how, what, why, where. Need seasoning. <laughs> a little salt. Fresh ground pepper. I love pepper. <laughs> now, we also got the abalone mushrooms in there. Fennel, optional, you could use onion. Abalone, a little rosemary, garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper. We're roasting them in a high oven. It's like the steak of mushrooms. <laughs> now, the salmon dish. Oh, yes. Look at this with the porcini mushroom crust. Beautiful. So, now what we're going to do. I'm with you, buddy. Now. Here's how I like to individually serve this. Individually serve this, whatever kind of favorite vegetable you have. I take the sauce, and I don't puree it. If you want to puree it, you can puree it. I take the sauce on the bottom. Little pool. And then I take one piece of the salmon with the porcini crust. Oh, yeah, babe. And then we go right on the old sauce. Okay? Get a little bit more of that porcini crust. And then a little thyme. And then you have that dish. Okay? Take some beautiful lump crab meat from the sea, okay? What I do is I add chives, parsley, a little tarragon, real simple. A little salt, <laughs> fresh pepper. If you want to add the juice of a citrus, like a lemon or whatever, great. Keep it simple. Olive oil, good olive oil. Okay? Then we toss the crab meat. Don't go in there breaking it all up. What did it do to you? <laughs> then we go get the abalone. Thanks to Chef Chris Wilson. Yes, we get the abalone mushroom package. Okay? We bring a package over here. Look at how wonderful this looks roasted with the fennel. So what I like to do, I take the abalone mushroom. But this is all good stuff right here. So I don't waste it. I go right on the plate with it. Okay? So I have that. The abalone mushroom roasted. We're going to fan it out. Look at how it's steaky it looks. You see that? Oh, yes. So now what we do is we take this abalone mushroom. And what we begin to do is start putting it right over 
this roasted fennel, okay? The steak of steaks. And then to finish it, we just come with a little bit of that crab meat on top of that, like this there. And a little bit of that, right like that. And a little bit of essence, like this. And a little BAM! Like that. Are you with me out there? I again want to thank my friends at the Pennsylvania Mushroom Board for all their support. Beautiful mushrooms. We're happy, happy, happy. I'm Emerald Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you next time.